In-depth sports coverage from The Athletic is now just £1 a month with an introductory offer. See the link in the description to sign up. Brighton have started the season brightly. Graham Potter continues to grow his reputation as one of the best younger English coaches, even though his side have fewer points than they probably deserve. Last season, across the course of 38 Premier League fixtures, Brighton only managed 15 games where they equalled or exceeded their opponent's expected goals total. What this means is that in 23 matches, Brighton's opponents created better chances. And so far this season, with an admittedly small sample size, Brighton have created the better chances or exceeded their opponents' expected goals in three of the four games they've played. And that includes matches against Chelsea and Manchester United. The only team to have bettered them was Everton, although even here the 4-2 scoreline was perhaps unfair as Everton only outscored Brighton by 1.7 to 1.2 in terms of expected goals. And the difference is significant. Shown here to two decimal places, we can see that Brighton are exhibiting a marked improvement, albeit after a small number of games. So in terms of formations, Potter has so far changed things around less. According to fbref.com, using StatsBomb data, this season has seen a 3-4-3 three times and a 3-5-2 once against Chelsea. Last season, Brighton were more fluid. This is partly because Potter is adaptive and changes his sides to match the opposition and was obviously affected by injury and availability too. But it's also possible that he's decided that 3-4-3, one of his most used setups in 2019-20, is the way forward this season. So, aside from potentially being more settled, what else are Brighton doing differently? Well, last season, they generally deployed Martin Montoya on the right side, either as a fullback or a wingback. Though far from a bad player, Montoya has been replaced by Tarek Lamptey, who carries a much more significant attacking threat. Montoya generally looked to play the ball into the wide areas or the channels for a midfielder or striker to move wide towards. While he did get forwards, his crosses were less commonly rapid overlaps crossed in from quite near the goal line and more frequently from a deeper position in the right half space, and as the result of several passes rather than a quick burst into space. Lamptey is quicker and more direct. He's able to get back to cover because of his speed, something that Montoya couldn't do and kept him in deeper positions, especially against teams with rapid wingers. Lamptey is also able to stay wider because Brighton's back three can space across the pitch and he doesn't have to tuck in as much. This is especially the case because Ben White, who excels at covering wide areas and bringing the ball out, is on the right of Brighton's back three. This means he generally has space to run into and because he's a better dribbler who can get forwards and cross from more dangerous areas, Brighton's midfield runners can continue to break vertically rather than needing to go wide to take a line pass, as was more common with Montoya. This means that Brighton can be more threatening down the right-hand side and crucially only really need one player to maintain that width rather than two. This means they can attack the box in greater numbers and, of course, Lamptey himself can carry the ball in field when attacking and cause his own problems. But also White has given Brighton another dimension. His ability to offer a passing option from the deep right half space means that the excellent midfield pairing of Yves Basuma and Steven Elzate can push up a bit higher or can stagger so that one is alongside White and the other, usually Elzate, pushes up to make more of a diamond with the forward line. White can also find Trossard with vertical passes or switch play across to the left-hand side where Elzate or outside him Solly March can find space and attack areas that have been vacated as Brighton drag opposition players to the right. This passing from deep makes Brighton's build-up more unpredictable and fluid than they could be last season. Fluidity extends to the forward line, with a trio of Neil Mopé, Aaron Connolly and Leandro Trossard complement Brighton's deeper build-up. Mopé, who's largely played as a left inside forward, and Connolly, who plays through the centre, are mobile and quick, capable of nice interchanges. Trossard can drift in field, which opens up space for Lamptey's forays down the right. But they are capable of interchanging, although Trossard is more likely to hang back and able to play intelligent through passes to the other two forwards. All three are astute pressers as well, and Mopé in particular has an aggressive quality that makes him hard to defend. There is less of a sense now that one striker is leading the line and more of a fluid unit that works the channels, drops off and is supported centrally by runners from deep, which makes Brighton more of a threat. 
So, whether the team can sustain their encouraging start remains to be seen, but the changes in expected goals are not enormous and could well be sustainable. And Potter's tactical shifts point to a considered integration of talents like White, Lamptey and Alzate. Everything points to a successful season on the South Coast. The Athletic is in-depth sports coverage that helps fans see the game from every angle. And Tifo is delighted to be able to offer full access to The Athletic now for just £1 per month. See the link in the description for details of this introductory offer. For football fans, that's access to the writing of journalists dedicated to your team, plus David Ornstein, Phil Hay, Daniel Taylor and many more. Not to mention over 400 full-time writers offering inside access and independent analysis of every team that you follow across every league that you care about. Get local expertise and unmatched league-wide perspective. The Athletics writers are in the bubble, on the field and behind the scenes as it all happens. Catch up, go deep, and join the conversation on the most important happenings in sports.